where are we going to go next? You know, there, there's so many, there's so many different lists and there's so many different angles. They're really like a lot of concentric circles with a lot of overlapping um, uh, important principles, you know, and we keep returning to hopefully and returning to a holding thing. We I like, I like the image of holding something up to the light and looking at it from a, a number of different angles. Yeah. And so we're, we're going to go next to something that we certainly touched on in, in various ways along the way, but it's, they're so central. They're so central to, um, to these practices and to, to the heart of, of, of Buddhist psychology and to the whole notion of freedom and what it means, what's involved in moving toward increasing degrees of freedom huh, in our lives. And those are um, known as the, the three uh, characteristics uh, of existence, yeah? The three marks of existence, the three great common denominators, you know, you know of existence, the underpinnings uh, of existence, yeah? <clears throat> They're true for, for, for all beings, <clears throat> yeah. And I was thinking this morning um, how <laughs> we saw one time, um, some of you might be familiar with um, uh, Bobby McFerrin, the musician Bobby McFerrin. We saw him one time in Sanders Theater, which is a, a theater in the round in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Really a great place for a, for a musical event. Mm. It's like an amphitheater, you know. <clears throat> and he said uh, at the very beginning, he said, you know, this is not so much a performance. He doesn't see himself as performing in this way, of somehow taking a high seat and performing. But more, I said, we're, we're, we're supping, you know, supping. We're eating together. We're, sh we're sharing. We're supping. As if we're all in a giant living room together. We're supping. And sometimes it, it feels like that with this, with you, that we're here just supping. You know, and hopefully it's, it's oh, you know, to some extent, spiritual food, uh, uplifting a uh, heart food, uh, you know, the sense of our coming together and just sharing a little bit together. And then uh, conceptually, we do some conceptual sharing and then we practice together. We do this all together. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. So, and that's how we're seeing it, you know. Uh, however shows up, we're, we're all here supping together. Uh, yeah, each morning. Yeah, yeah. So the three characteristics of existence. We'll touch on this. We'll be this be an overview. A whole week will be an overview, and then we'll be spending some time. Are we in a hurry? Are we going anywhere? We're not going anywhere. We don't have to. We don't have to rush through these um, these important uh, bits uh, so that we can get on to the next one. We do enough of that in our lives, don't we? That's part of it. <clears throat> let's move on to the next. I got it. Let's move on to the next. We do get it. <clears throat> we get it conceptually. A lot of these, a lot of these principles, uh, but it's a question of then really supping with them, really dropping into them. You know, that sense of the, they are, uh, the concepts are just the beginning. It's really, look, let's really take a much deeper look at each of these. You know, because they're very much implied in um, in, in the in, in well being and in the lack of well being and in non orienting toward well being. They're very much not just good ideas. Very much connected with um, what is involved in moving toward freedom and and how they're how how they're involved in somehow are not moving toward freedom. Yeah, these three characteristics. And here they are, and you know them. Yeah, you know them. Yeah, but one of them is, um, is Dukkha. And I remember originally there was this real, mis there was one of the first misunderstandings of Buddhism when it came over here, because the translation was life is suffering, which is not a correct, it, it, not a correct interpretation at all. And it is suffering as if it's all suffering it's reducible to suffering that's what it is that's what life is this 
this is not at all what the what, what the, this practice would not these practices would not be around for 2600 years if that's what this was all reduced to yeah yeah um but that this is dissatisfaction suffering yeah disappointment uh is it, it is in there it's woven into the rug you know it's war it's woven into the fabric of life though in a way that it is not it is not possible to completely avoid it's not possible we do our best to do that which is also part of the issue here <laughs> as we move forward the ways we try and avoid it assiduously the way we try to avoid yeah that's a whole other story that's part of the story but we cannot completely avoid dukkha right we can't avoid the larger existential unavoidables of sickness old age and death and loss we can't we can't it doesn't mean that the situation is hopeless again once again there's a very optimistic thread woven into this you know and a part of it is what can we do there are certain things we can't and, but it's also it's it, it, there are other pieces of dukkha of course it's not getting what we want getting what we don't want that, that, those are two mouthfuls right there <laughs> not getting what we want and getting what we don't want at different points in small ways and in big ways yeah. You know? There's so many flavors of that. We'll we'll, invent, we'll take a closer look at a lot of the threads of that. The not getting what we want. The disappointment around not getting what we want. The judgment around the disappointment around not getting what we want. The proliferation around not getting what we want. The desperately wanting what we're not able to get. All of that, you know, is where we'll, where we'll, we'll, we'll unfold some of these pieces. But for now, just that. Wow, not getting what we want and getting what we don't want. You know? Yeah? Mm. So much there. So much there. Yeah? Mm. Now, the second one is impermanence, anicca. Anicca? You know, all these things we don't, part of the issue from the, from this, from these, from the Buddhist perspective, part of the issue is we don't, we would rather not look more closely into these, th in, into these three. We're not wired to look more closely into these three. Impermanence, who wants more of that? It's not a question of whether we want it or not. It's a question of looking, look, really being willing to look in and really seeing how true it is how true it is the closer we look the more things are slip sliding away there was a zen master you may have heard this story he went into a law a deep retreat and he came out and his students gathered around said we will you know you know would you please tell us your your deepest insight during this retreat and in zen fashion he said nothing at all for a while and they said, but please, would you tell, you know, come on, I know it's something, something that will help us. He said, yeah, here's my deepest insight for this retreat. We're all going to die. And none of you are behaving as if that were true. None of you are living as if that were true. We don't want to turn toward that. We know it. Oh, sure, we know it. But we don't, what does that mean? Do we want to turn, I don't want to turn toward that. I want to turn toward life, not death. Our whole culture wants to turn away from death and sickness, you know, right? Of course it does. We're not wired to turn toward it. But it's true, isn't it? We're not going to be here forever. What does it mean that we're not going to be here forever, but we don't live as if that were true? Well, we'll explore that in some detail. What does it mean that we take things for granted? That we don't fully appreciate. Yeah. 
that we plan and plan and plan and plan. Everybody dies somewhere in the middle of a five year or a 10 year plan. Right? It's okay, planning is okay. What does it mean to come more, more into terms with the fact that everything is changing constantly? that we're living in a sea of impermanence and that we're wired to make things more permanent. We're wired to know, hold on, make things more permanent, you know? Yeah. We need to look into this more. We'd rather not. I know, I understand. I'd rather not also. I'd rather just take more vitamins and live forever too. We wanna live forever, we do. We do, I get it. We get that. It's, a, it's the problems that that creates that we <laughs> that would come along with that, yeah. And the, and of course the third one is the the business of the self. This is a this is a sticky one there. The self that the self is not enduring or uh, permanent and in or inherent. It's not in here. It, have you found the homunculus of the self inside here anywhere? Even neuroscientists have looked for that. The closest thing they come up with, with is the executive function. What the heck is that? Where is that? Where does that live? You know, it's that there's, it's, it's, there's, it's a series of changing processes. It's changing, changing. Where was the self when we were six months old? It hadn't been constructed yet. It hadn't been constructed yet. What happens when somebody has dementia? It's deconstructing. It's not permanent. It was never permanent. It's a construction that's kept alive and reinforced moment to moment to moment to moment. Okay, well, who wants to look into that more? Well, I don't. Not really. Except that my belief that it's solid and enduring, that I keep wanting to enhancing it and building up and belonging more and wanting more and not feeling like that, that's where so much suffering comes in. That's why there's a whole host of new evolutionary problems that come with the, the amazing development of having a separate self and, and, you know, and knowing it and being, how could we connect? There's so many beautiful things that come with it and a whole host of problems that come with it, right? That's why we need to look into it. Not, not to disown it, to say that it's not useful or not functional or not important, but to also see where it creates much unhappiness for us and to be able to look and see where and how. That's why, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we're going to kind of noodle around in these territories together, you know, to see what's what, to put some words, you know, some concepts. Right. They are concepts, but man, they are much deeper than concepts. Mm -hmm. They are the waters we're swimming in, you know? Yeah, and it's really checking that out. See if that's so. Is it so? It, you know, this is where we, you know these these are where our investigations, our meditations, need to uh, uh, take us. Uh, they're spiritual inquiries. They're not just concepts, right? So we're going to do that. 